Hey guys, so I wanted to make this super impromptu um, phone video and just sit down and have a little life chat about what's going on right now in the world. It's been very upsetting to watch things on the news. I have so much respect for and gratitude for all of the people in the front lines, the doctors and nurses and grocery store clerks and Amazon shippers. There are a lot of people dealing with maybe their own health being compromised during this time. Maybe they're losing their loved ones or a job or their house. But I wanted to make this video for those of us who are stuck at home and dealing with self-isolation and what that looks like for people with anxiety and depression. Because I know firsthand I've struggled with anxiety my whole life. I don't know if any of you guys know that. I'm really afraid of everything. <laughs> Something like this, a global pandemic where there's lots of chaos and panic and anxiety in the world puts even more, I would say, anxiety on, on me. The way that I typically combat my anxiety is to talk to people or to go out in the world and kind of distract myself, but this is forcing me to have to be home and deal with it. And I think for a lot of people, they're learning to connect with themselves in a really deep way, which can be scary. But I wanted to share my tips and things that I've learned um, from just dealing with anxiety and also having to be in isolation during this time. Nobody has all the answers. Nobody knows if anyone's trying to pitch you or sell you on, oh, this is the way to get through it or this is when it's gonna end. It's not necessarily good information. But I just thought I would share some of these things with you because they're things that we do have control over. That's what gives me the most anxiety is just knowing that I can't control things. But these are some things that put my mind at ease. So the first couple things are pretty obvious and then it gets into a little bit of deep inner work that uh, we'll have to talk about. But the first thing is to just take care of your body, which sounds very simple, but move your body, even if it's just around the block or doing a 10 minute workout video. Not that you have to start going on a diet or starting a new workout regimen or doing all of these self-improvement things. You don't have to do any of that that's being kind of peddled to us right now. But I do find that a way to relieve stress is to move my body. If it is possible for you, um, you know, to cook, cook certain things that are healthy, you start with just, okay, breakfast and lunch, I'm gonna have healthy something. And then with dinner, I'm gonna be more gentle on myself and let myself have whatever. Drinking a lot of water too, that'll flush out anything. Drinking hot water, like hot tea, I have read. There's bacteria in your body, hot water will kill it. So that's something good to keep in mind. Even if you just put on some music and start dancing around to your favorite song, I find that just moving my body relieves stress and gets the nervous energy out of my system. The second thing is that we can control how we respond to panic. What happens to me sometimes is if I go a whole day distracting myself, then I lie in bed at night and all the panic from the day or different things I was fearful or anxious about just hit me and I start to feel out of control and I get what's called a panic attack where your heart races and you start to feel like maybe the world the walls are closing in or you're gonna die or pass out or something and you don't really know why like it's not always that something sets off the feeling it's just how you feel and so what to do when you're in that moment things that have helped me is do the five, four, three, two, one method, which is that you pick five things that you can see, four things that you can touch, three things that you can hear, two things you can uh, smell, and one thing you can taste. And it gets harder and harder as you go, but you really have to focus on the world around you. And the five senses really can bring you back to and ground you to this moment right now. Because in this moment, there really is nothing to fear. When you don't know what to do, get still and listen for a message. If you're feeling like, I I feel like a lot of nervous energy, I don't know what to do with myself, I'm feeling bored, I'm feeling stir crazy, just sit with yourself in a meditative way. Even if you sit there and you have fear or anxiety and it comes up, try to just observe it and let it wash over you and understand that it's gonna pass. Recognize your present reality. You are not your fear. You are bigger than your fear. Fear is just one thing that comes in and comes out like a channel changing, it's temporary. Number three, listen to other people's problems and stories with the same passion and rigor that you have for wanting to be heard. And that is something that is really challenging because during this time we all wanna vent and we all wanna complain and we all just wanna feel like we're being heard and listened to, but something that not only helps other people um, 
and can help someone else feel validated when you're when you're just a listener. But it also helps me when I'm listening because it takes me out of my own head and what I'm worried about and I'm focusing on someone else's issues, which um, helps me realize I'm not alone. Number four is to do a guided visualization. This is also something you can do in response to a panic attack. I recommend doing it every day, uh, guided meditations or even if you just sit and visualize yourself on a beach um, in that moment, nothing can harm you. Using your imagination isn't escaping your reality, it's actually discovering the truest form of your reality. By sitting there and thinking, I'm on a beach, I'm happy, I'm calm, that is actually your truest reality, your truest self. And you can access that higher reality and that calm feeling at any time. There are several guided meditations on YouTube um, for free. There's also an app called Inscape and an app called Calm, which I use regularly. Five, invest some time in a new hobby, whether that's coloring or reading or hiking or playing video games, whatever makes you happy and keeps you occupied and keeps your mind working. And maybe it's something that you didn't have time for before that now you get to spend time doing the thing you enjoy and look for the silver lining in all of this chaos. Six, keep in touch with your loved ones and check in on each other. This may seem like a really obvious one, but even if you think you're doing it enough, like maybe once a day, maybe do it twice a day because you never know who is struggling around you. I've seen this in my own life happen. You just wanna have surface level conversations with people and say like, oh, I'm doing fine, how are you? Holding up, hanging in there. But really sometimes if you ask at a, at a certain moment, that person won't be doing okay. Maybe reach out to someone you haven't heard from in a while. I've been trying to do that. You can even send a good old fashioned um, handwritten letter. I'm gonna be sending a lot of you guys handwritten postcards. Seven, this one is so important. Remember that you are not alone. That is something that is so easy to forget, especially during this time of social isolation. Another part of that is being honest with yourself and how you're feeling and sharing that with somebody will inspire someone else to be honest and it, and share how they're really feeling. And I hope that that's what this video does for you guys, that you know that I'm struggling and you'll get to see maybe in a comment um, on this video that someone else is struggling and that can help you feel less alone. I think now we're even more connected really than ever um, because we're all experiencing similar types of feelings at the same time. Normally, it's like, oh, this person's going through this and I can t vent to them or they can help me. Um, and you kind of take turns as friends or in relationships. Right now, everyone's kind of shit hitting the fan all at once. <laughs> and so you kind of have a sense of how someone's doing, even if it's a broader level. You should still check in on them and it'll still help you feel less alone. I told you they get more important as we go. So number eight is probably the biggest one um, that I've been hearing just so many people talk about messages of self-improvement right now and how to hustle during this time and use this time to become your best self and work on yourself and, and start a workout plan or you know start a book and I think that is really false. I think it's very hard to use this time to improve yourself to the best version of you when the world is in complete chaos and is grieving and dealing with a lot. But obviously companies and people in the media want you to feel like, well, they have all this time to spend on things online or to start a new, you know, buy a Peloton or buy whatever. And they want to push messages of self-improvement onto you that you aren't good enough as you are and you need this product or this thing in order to be better. And now is the time, now is the perfect time to start that. I'm saying that when our world is in a complete state of chaos and grief and panic, it can be very hard to define a clear purpose or become the best version of you or um, check off everything on your to-do list. Be gentle with yourself and do the next right thing. You don't need to improve, you just need to be you, be yourself. You don't have to do anything to become yourself. You just need to be with yourself and listen to what your heart is telling you. So don't buy into the message that it's time to improve yourself. Be kind to yourself. It is much harder to do this inner self work than to just go buy a product, but I promise you it is much more rewarding. This one is really hard to do for me, um, but remember that this is temporary. Everything is temporary. Even though we don't have a clear end date of, of when this is gonna end, 
it will end. <laughs> Everything just ebbs and flows in life and you're going to be okay. You're going to get through this. We're all going to get through this. And then once it's over, we can take all these strategies and sensitivity to others and compassion and gratitude back with us in our arsenal into the real world and we can emerge more connected and strong and whole than ever before. And I think that is the silver lining in all of this. Everything has two sides. So yes, there's a ton of grief and panic and hardship going on right now. But the flip side of that is that there's also a lot of gratitude and joy and laughter and, and you know, finding joy in the little things. I think that's really beautiful. And the last one, which is really impossibly hard, <laughs> but it's something that I'm really trying to do is to just get the hell off your phone. I know that you're watching this video right now, probably on your phone, but I promise you that if you take breaks throughout the day um, and just go and be in nature or go and sit down and just listen and be quiet with your thoughts, journal about your thoughts, you will feel a hundred million times better. Comparison is the thief of joy. And what we all do when we're looking at Instagram feeds is we're comparing our our jobs and our careers and our lives and our bodies. And we're also comparing our suffering and comparing who has it worse during this time isn't going to be good for anyone. Even saying I shouldn't be complaining because there are people that are dying from this and there are people on the front lines dealing with this every day is kind of invalidating your own feelings. It doesn't actually help those people to say, well, I'm not gonna complain. Um, in fact, it probably makes it worse because you're burying your actual feelings. We have to be careful about the messages that we're letting into our hearts and minds right now, especially with the news and where we're getting our news from. Pick one or two sources that you like and that you trust um, to deliver your news and then get the heck off. Sometimes it can be a good connector or feel like, oh, I want to see how what they're doing, want to see how they're coping with this. And obviously, we want to be involved with our communities right now and that includes social media. Some of the things that we're choosing to consume and that we are being fed right now by different companies and different things that we follow um, can be very toxic. So we just have to make sure to balance our intake of that with being with ourselves because the message of you're not doing enough or you don't have enough or there's not enough to go around with like the whole toilet paper thing there's not enough and there's chaos and what the universe is hearing is like okay like they don't want to have any more toilet paper like you're just putting that message out there and it's not helpful i'm here to tell you that you are doing enough you are enough um just as you are you don't need to buy anything or be anything or do anything else except for exactly what you are in order to be enough. So those are 10 things you can do right now to deal with social isolation. And one bonus one is that you can make art or you can consume art. And that is something that is not canceled. I've seen a lot of these things like music isn't canceled and like writing isn't canceled. I released a song recently, last Friday, that I wrote last summer that has to do with feeling alone and isolated in your 20s. And I had no idea when I set the release date that this was going to be going on, but it's actually very relevant to our current situation. I just wrote it when I was feeling really alone, being really introverted and not wanting to really go out to parties, tired of the hustle and trying to make new friends all the time. I'm really just not good at small talk and being in big groups of people. I'm much better with this one-on-one -on -one approach, which is why I'm trying to do more of these types of videos. Let me know in the comments if you enjoy this. But I think many people right now are hungry for that connection and maybe miss going to parties. And so I thought we could have like an introverted, our own kind of like introverted parties. I was going to do some more live streams. I did one um, with the release of the song, but I want to continue to do them throughout this quarantine to help us get through. And I'm now offering one-on-one -on -one live chat sessions on my Patreon page. The link is in the description. You can talk to me about whatever you want, whatever's going on in your life or we can have a conversation about the music industry if you're interested in getting into it, or we can even do a voice lesson or a songwriting lesson. You can share lyrics with me. I've seen a lot of people making really, really cool art during this time. A lot of you have been sending stuff to me, so I would love to make this available to you guys. So check out that link. I really wanna hold on to the things I discovered in this isolation period, which um, are also kind of relevant to the song. We all have big dreams somewhere deep inside of us, and 
I think this period of isolation is showing us that maybe we're not putting them in the forefront of our lives. We're not putting them in the driver's seat. Maybe we're putting fear in the driver's seat. And this can show us how much love we have and how much passion we have. Um, by the end of this, we'll have it all pent up and, and maybe we'll just wanna release it out into the world after this is all over. I wrote this song from a very lonely perspective and I wanted to make it like an anti-party anthem. Like, I I don't wanna go to parties, but I can still make a song that sounds like I'm at a party. <laughs> but I realized in doing that and since the release of this song that a lot of you guys feel this way and that it's not just me. And especially during this time, we're all feeling a little bit alone and maybe like we're the only one feeling this way. So definitely stream Sad, Hungry, Lonely. I have some merch available. I just opened a merch store. I don't know what took me so long. The link is in the description and there's some really cool Sad, Hungry, Lonely merch. There's a video that I put out uh, chopping up bits of a uh, movie that I love in making the music video because I couldn't make a music video <laughs> with uh, the situation going on. And it would also mean a lot to me if you guys save the song on your Spotify, put it on your playlist. And if you're feeling alone, sad, hungry, or tired, definitely leave a comment and let me know what's going on in your life. Um, just, I wanna open that community of just being honest and vulnerable with each other. You can also text me, my number is in the description. Continue to choose hope over fear. Hope and fear cannot occupy the same space. Invite one to stay. Choose hope, it's gonna be okay. You are not your fear, you're more than your fear. Love you guys. <laughs> Lonely, tired.